We welcome now the Hyundai Texans radio studio, the head coach of the Texans, Lovey Smith. Coach, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Okay, let's talk about a little bit about the Browns. We'll get into the Cowboys, but running the football, you got back to that against Cleveland. Pierce, back to good production. I know it's an ensemble thing, but can you discuss that? You mentioned in your press conference maybe you needed to do it more. Yeah, of course, you know, looking at, you know, the video right now. Um, but just talking about Damon, it seemed like he was an old Damon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lyon did a good job of, of uh, giving him an opportunity, and he ran hard throughout. That's the only way he knows how to play. So I was really pleased with what uh, he was able to do from start to finish. And, yes, yeah, looking at hindsight right now, to me, if you look at the stat sheet and he didn't have over 20 yards, not really happy, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, we need to just try to make sure that that happens. Coach, defensively, and you and I talked about this a little bit after the game, you gave up three points all day. And if you go back, you didn't give up any against Miami. In the second half, you gave up just 16 in the first half uh, when they're going there. What defensively is – I mean, one of the things you mentioned in the press conference, you talked about it taking some time. Do you feel like guys are kind of getting back in rhythm with you know Roy and Malik up front, some linebackers, you know, Christian playing behind those guys? Are you starting to kind of see those puzzle pieces coming together a little bit more with the defense? What's really been kind of working defensively for you? Yes, I think that is the case, John. Uh, first, Malik Collins, our three technique, most important position on our defense, yep. was out. Now he's back healthy. Right. Uh, Roy Lopez played his best game. Kirk Heinrich also played well. So, And then some of the young players, uh, you know, Kristen Harris, he missed an, a lot of time, but now he's starting to put some games back to get, uh, back. To back. And we see improvement every game that he plays. We move Jalen Petrie and uh, Jonathan Owens. We switch positions for them. So Jake Hansen has moved into the lineup. Um, you know, uh, Derek Stingley went down. Dez King, I thought, played outstanding ball yeah. at the corner position. So a lot of these guys are really stepping up. It's just a shame that we're not getting wins where we could really talk about the improvements they're making. What about Malik Collins, though, Coach? What does he do that's hard to duplicate, that's so important up front for your defense? Can well, you describe that to the listeners? Yeah, it's just that, you know, the three technique, which, which normally lines up over the strong side guard, Um the, the tackle has to pretty much block the defensive end. So that guy is, is very close to the quarterback, and you really can't double-team an awful lot. So he can really cause havoc. Everything we do is kind of based off of what we can do with the, in that three, at that three-technique position. And you need an athletic guy there. And Lee Collins last week had the best game he's played, at, maybe in his career. And this week he was solid, too. But it all starts up front. And then not just our defensive line in general. You know, we're playing eight guys, we're rotating them, and they're being productive. Coach, there are a lot of different ways to get a safety, but it feels like when the defense gets a stop like you did, it feels like it gives the energy in, to, a, to the defense, into the whole building when you make a stop the way that you did. You kind of feel that way after the safety? Uh, like, Because your guys celebrated that safety as if they – won the Super Bowl. I mean, it was pretty exciting to see the energy. Yeah. But what does the safety sort of do for a defense and for a team? Well, a, a few things. First off, I mean, we're at home. And, of course, the crowd is into it at home. You know, that helped an awful lot. Great punt to pin them down there. But our first goal on the defensive side of the football is the same as it is with special teams and with offense. It's a score. So whenever you can get a score, safeties are hard to come by. In order for that to happen, you have to be disciplined and taking your gap, attacking yep. your gap, and that's what we're all about. But that play gave us a lot of momentum. So against the run, Coach, they did get some yards, but they weren't that good on third down at all. You had a lot to do with that, obviously. And what about Watson coming back and playing his first game in a long time? Your thoughts? Well, well Mark, first I'll just tell yards. That probably tells you the least uh, – uh, mm-hmm. it's probably the least important – one of the least <laughs> important stats that really tell you the outcome of the game. But – by saying that, we had the that's the lowest toll yardage game that we've had all year. Uh, but it's the other things that really matter. I'm talking about that really tells you how a team is playing. Third down conversions. You know, mm-hmm. us offensively, we we haven't been converting. Stop drives. But defensively, you know, as long as you're keeping an opponent, if you're if you're converting, you know, about 70 percent on the defensive side of the football, that's good. And that's what we have been doing. 
So all of these stats that really kind of matter a little bit is what, is, is, you know, that's how we're playing, our best ball. But ultimately, as you said, John, it's about points. Yeah. It's about points, and, and that's why we really like what they did yesterday. Along those lines, Coach, assessing the progress as you're going through and I go to Jalen Petrie's interception. You talk. You you mentioned it last week. You moved them over the free safety, and that route that the Browns ran is one to exploit a free safety in the middle of the field. And yet he didn't bite. Yeah. He didn't bite. He made a great read on the dig. He let it go, and then he went back and played the post. It was brilliant how he did that. And I know it's the interception that you see, but how do you assess sort of the progress, especially a young guys making like Jalen Petrie, like Christian Harris, when you say, okay, you're not getting wins, but you can see the progress happening. A play like that kind of stood out, but are there other plays that you're seeing from your young players in particular where you're seeing progress? And how are you assessing that as you see it? Well, just on that play you talk about uh, with Jalen Petrie, that's a tough play for the free safety because yep. you're right, you have a lure in front of it. Mm -hmm. If you're a fisherman, you have a lure in front of it. Normally that fish will bite that lure. Uh, he didn't. That was more of a veteran uh, move right. not to do it and then to be able to make the to make the play from the middle of the field. He's done it two weeks in a row. Last week it was called back, but mm -hmm. his play uh, really said that he's just a smart football player and he's going to get it. He, Christian Harris, Jake Hansen, those guys are smart football players and they just need to play and they're going to keep elevating their game. Is it accurate to say, for lack of a better way of putting it, that some of the rookies might have been hitting that rookie wall, but now they've kind of blown through it to the other side and, and they're – they're past that now, Coach. They're adjusted, if you will. You know, uh, that, that rookie wall, a lot's been said about it. As I was telling them, I said, guys, I don't know exactly who that is and what that is. <laughs> it's kind of abstract out there a little bit. <laughs> and it doesn't have to happen that way. What I've seen from our young players is that they're so eager. They're mm. eager to keep trying to get it right. And I'm going to go, we're talking defensively, offensively. Troy Harrison, uh, Damon Pierce. Uh, Tegan, these young players, Kenyon Green, that can't wait to keep, uh, you know, improving their game. That's what I see from our young players right now. Coach, offensively, I know it's been tough, but there were some moments yesterday where you really got, you got Damian back involved. I should say back involved. You've always wanted to get him involved, but you had opportunities. You got him to slice through there. But passing game wise, what do you want to see? I know you want to move yards and get points, but what do you want to see from the passing game? What would help the passing game kind of get going in your, in your opinion? Well, I, I mean, it's still, you know, John, I mean, throwing and catching a little bit. Yeah. I thought we were off on some of our throws. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it kind of starts with that a little bit. We had opportunities to catch some of the balls, and then some unfortunate things happened throughout. Uh, so there's an awful lot goes in decision-making, um, and we're in those we, – we have plays out there to be made. Yep. First, and uh, eventually we got to be able to make some. Yep. The first play of the game, Coach, at Teagan open, play. and yeah. it's mm. weird because he goes, makes a great effort, but the ball takes a terrible bounce. And at first it didn't look like it could be a pick, but then it was a pick, and it was kind of a weird play. Teagan played a lot for you yesterday, though. Yeah, he did. And that play, Mark, you're talking about, oh, opening play of the game, you want momentum, crowds into it, mm -hmm. and we have them. They have a busted coverage. We have them, and we can't actually get the ball to them. So offensively, we you know, we just got to be able to get more points. It's as simple as that. But if you're glass half full um, offensively, we sc our offense scored more points than our offense yesterday. So, mm -hmm. but just not enough. Coach, I want to ask you about a curious play that happened in the second quarter inside a minute where Deshaun went back to pass. And then as he was about to throw, it looked like somebody kind of got by his feet and he kind of he threw it to the side. And then Jerry picked it up and went in the end zone, and there was no signal. There was nothing that happened, and they all kind of looked at each other for a second, and then everybody started celebrating, and then he came across and said, no, that was an incomplete pass. Did they give you any explanation, yeah. or was there anything said to you about why they didn't at least go up to review for that? Well, they, yes. Uh, first off, and I thought, I thought the officials handled it the right way. If you don't know, just let the play. Don't right. stop it. Right. Let it play out, which they did. Right. And, yes, the explanation I was told is that uh, since it was a score, they're automatically uh, reviewed, and, and it was determined that the ball did go forward. Gotcha. It was a forward pass. So that's the explanation that we got. Mm. Now, in these situations, no matter what would happen, Coach, when it's sort of iffy, 
Do you go back the next day and look at that tape and say, hey, were they right or wrong about that kind of thing? How often do you do that kind of stuff? You know, we do, and I used to do it a whole lot more, and we mm -hmm. have about 10 plays or so that, hey, you missed this one, missed this one, nothing happens. <laughs> I mean, it, doing, they're trying to, doing the best job that they can. Mistakes are going to be made. There were, you know, there's an end zone. I thought there was a pass interference in oh, the end zone uh, yeah. that I saw. It was playing, but um, it's, you know, real time. It's hard to yeah. get all those right. Uh, the officials normally don't determine the outcome of the game. Well, they evaluate themselves, too, obviously. Yes, they're, they do. they're being graded by their own crew. What is it like in the offseason with the officiating part of it? Do you guys get together at the Combine and talk about this or at the NFL meetings in March? How does that part of it work? Yeah, it does, especially on things that, that need to be tweaked, rules that need to be tweaked. But most of the, on, on how it goes a little bit in all season, uh, the explanation you're going to get is, yeah, you know, we missed that one. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, right. there's nothing else you can say. A lot of good it does you now. Yeah, a lot. That's why even like right now, I spending a whole lot of time on that game that happened. I saw it differently. I look, I'm right, but what what do you get from it? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I love you. You were right. Let's move on. That's pretty much it. <laughs> you get that letter in the mail one day. Uh, look, we missed one. Sorry about that. I got one of those letters many years ago, Coach. Uh, speaking of, instead of looking back, let's look forward. I know you probably haven't gotten too much into Dallas Cowboys, but they played last night. Uh, got a win over an AFC South team, Indianapolis Colts. Really kind of blew up in the fourth quarter. What do you see from the Dallas Cowboys coach? Dak Prescott leading them. A lot of names, a lot of people knows. A lot of people know Micah Parsons over there can rush the quarterback pretty well. He does a pretty good job, number 11. What do you see with the Cowboys? Well, just offensively, you start with Dak. Outstanding player. Uh, smart football player. Can make all of the throws. They're different when he's out there. Um, you know, we know about the running backs. You know, two excellent running backs. Um, Lamb's a heck of a receiver, you know. They, they uh, good offensive line. And on the defensive side, yeah, Michael Parsons is about as good, but it's so much more than yeah. him. Uh, Diggs as a, you know, as a cornerback, safeties, uh, another defensive end. It's, um, uh, I mean, there's a reason why they're leading their division right yeah. now. They're, they're normally one of the teams that you have to deal with. That's why it's a great opportunity for us. One of the best football teams uh, in the NFL right now. And uh, we haven't played our ball, but we're improving. Um, it could be a heck of a chance for us to sneak up on. Coach, what's it like to play in that building? They have those weird oh. suites that are right behind the bench. and They're kind of lower than the bench. They're looking at the backs of your feet, really. And then you have the giant video board. And we have a huge video board here that's actually bigger. Mm -hmm. But theirs is a different shape, and it's right in the middle. I don't know if that affects things or what it's like to coach there. You tell me. What is it like to be in that building? Yeah, it'll be, you know, I played there a few times. And, you know, Mark, some of the things you're talking about, I don't even know about. You know, <laughs> uh, I know there's a lot of fans in the stands, different sta different mm -hmm. stadiums, and there's a lot of fans. And as far as the scoreboard, though, you that is different. when. And for me, you don't have to wonder, yeah. all right, where, where can I get the best look? I mean, it's normally right there in front of you. That really should help you and the players using that, of course, a lot more too. Uh, but eventually, the field's the same. Uh, not much, not, mm -hmm. not, you know, much of that's going to really uh, dictate the outcome. Well, Coach, I thought about that as you were talking about that because that is up as opposed to in the end zone. But when you're at NRG and there's a play like that one, I mean, you immediately want to. I mean, immediately. immediately up on a video board, you're like, "Hey, I gotta, I gotta see this thing right away." Immediately, I've you know been here long enough. It's according to what direction the ball is going right. to, and it's clear. Our guys do a great job on what they replay, all of that. Yeah. So we rely on it quite a bit. All right, Coach, since we're playing the Cowboys here, I want to talk to you about Tom Landry Cowboys oh. or Jimmy Johnson Cowboys. You pick. <laughs> Usually I get this question. This I is know. a who's better question. I know. It's like a who's better question. Well, you, you know, again, two outstanding coaches. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I grew up, when I grew up, yeah, the guy I saw on the sideline yeah. was Tom Landry, and they, they were outstanding then. But, uh, again, two Hall of Fame-type coaches. Coach, if somebody asks you, and I guess I'm about to do it, but <laughs> football in the 70s, when the Cowboys were big with Landry and going to Super Bowls, and there were a lot of good teams back then. The Steelers were great, among others. The Vikings were great. They never won a Super Bowl. How different is it today? How can you simply answer this question? Football then, 
football now. I know the guys are bigger, faster, stronger now. Then the passing percentages were way lower. 50% was pretty good back then. Now it's unacceptable or whatever. You tell me. Well, you know, for me, I just don't think it's changed an awful lot. I mean, there was good play back then. Um, there were Hall of Famers at every position going in then, so you had lead players at every position there. Yeah, some of the things were different. So, you know, offensive football, you can say it was a little different because mm-hmm. now there is more of an emphasis on on the pass. Right. You know, back then you would only get in the gun, <clears throat> seemed like, on, on third down, third and longs, and some of those things. You don't see the Cowboys standing up and then getting <laughs> set in their, you know, in their stance before. North Dallas 40. But, but eventually it kind of comes down to some of the same thing, blocking, mm-hmm. tackling, throwing the football. Uh, Back then, if you turn the ball over as much as we did yesterday, you're going to lose a game. You know, some of those things will never change. When you see that Cowboys star, I know we live in Houston and in Texas, and there are a lot of stars, but I would imagine growing up, coach, that star, I mean, it's still iconic in the state. I know people in Houston won't like to hear me say that, but it is. It's an iconic image throughout the NFL. I mean, you ask about iconic you know, organizations and Dallas Cowboys comes up for you having grown up in this state and being on the other side of that team. What have you thought about what that's going to be like to go over there and see? Yeah, that's a team that either I grew up watching or I know a lot of, but it's the Cowboys. It's that star. It's like, ah, because either you love or you hate these guys. How do you think that's going to feel on Sunday when you go against them? Well, you know, early in my career, the first time I, you know, I played there, the old stadium, the new stadium, yeah. I, I've kind of, we've uh, played team brought our team yeah. uh, both times so now uh, it's just know, another play team them. it's a uh, it's another team that yeah. we need to play our best ball to beat i don't think it's any more than that well coach h town we don't like the cowboys nope. so the players i know they're from all over the place but you do have a lot of h town players you have a good group here and a lot you of do. texas yes, players so how do you instill that, the importance of what Johnny's talking about? I don't know. if This is probably not important to you. <laughs> but that, that rivalry, that sense of rivalry between H-Town and Dallas and getting after it that way, is that well, discussed at all, or do you just sort of let that well, happen? I, well, I think you can – first off, you can let it happen. They understand where Dallas – I mean, two teams, you know, two Texas NFL teams, and there's an awful lot that just goes along with that. Right. And we do have a lot of players that grew up in our state, played high school ballers. So I, we, we know the significance of, of playing this type of game uh, when we are. Uh, but we'll still talk about it. But for us right now, we're still in a different place yeah. because we need, to, we need to play better ball against anyone. Mm-hmm. And But I think it's always neat when you keep it within the state of Texas. When you play a team like the Cowboys, they just played the Colts, and you know the Colts well. Does it help as the guys look at the film? Like, I know what these guys yes. do against me, so seeing what happened against them, does that help? Yeah, it helps a lot. And uh, just in general, that's where, uh, you know, now, um, you know, we there's a big, pretty big body of work on right. looking at an opponent. And what we do is try to look at like teams that, you know, offensively, uh, you know, some of the things they do, you know, versus certain things. And for us, defensively, looking at them offensively, yes, this is how they attack a similar team. And for us, Indy is, a, Indy is at least a cousin of us defensively. So that, those game Chicago Bears, we have quite a few that have similar defenses to ours. Coach, I'm going to ask you something maybe from out left field, but Senior Bowl invitations have started to go out. Well, a lot of them have gone out. And I follow the account, and every, every the other day I feel like I see Illinois player, Sidney Brown, Chase Brown, Jartavius Martin. I mean, I'm seeing all these Illinois players that I know you had a, a pretty big hand in recruiting and bringing to the University of Illinois. I don't know how many it's going to be. It might end up being five or six that end up down there. But as the coach that recruited those kids to go there, and now they're having an opportunity to come to the NFL, to go to an event like the Senior Bowl, how does that, as a as a their the coach that did recruit them and bring them down, how does it make you feel to see all those guys kind of grow up and have this opportunity? Uh, it, you know, really love seeing it. Makes them feel good because uh, just going back even last year, I think over ten of the guys were in an NFL camp. Yeah, quite a few have made it last year. You add that this group mm-hmm. to those; these are all the guys that we recruited, and um, you know, I did. I uh, you know. Some people up there sent me the Big Ten, all Big Ten teams. Yeah. You know, Tharp, Winner. We, mm-hmm. uh, of course, you mentioned Chase Brown, uh, defensive line. There are a lot of players. Yeah. So it's always good to see them uh, excel. And um, 
again, great day to see it all. You did a good job recruiting a Canada too, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> That's an interesting story. Well, we got to hear that at some point. But, Coach, a couple more quick ones for you. We have Mario Addison on the Texans Player Show on Tuesday night. So tell me something about Mario. You had him in Chicago a long time ago. You have him here. It's got to be strange to have a guy as a rookie, and then you have him here as a veteran who's been around a long time. Yeah, I just think just Mario's story. I mean, we had him in Chicago. He wasn't drafted. So yeah. there's a guy that had to earn everything that he's gotten year after year. Um talking about a success story, and you get a chance to meet him. Uh, he's got personality, and uh, he's playing. He played good football yesterday. You know, he came in, he was, he was injured early on, of course, in mm-hmm. all season, missed a lot of time. But now he's hitting his stride, and uh, believe me, you just kind of give him the mic, and he'll take off talking. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and finally, the Amogee Bank Ask Coach question of the week. This has to do with holiday, Christmas decorations, Coach. When do they go up at the Smith household? Is before oh, Thanksgiving easy. too early? Is it right after Thanksgiving? When is it, Coach? And I thought growing up, these were old Texas traditions on how I was told. Mm-hmm. You can't put up Christmas decorations and the day after Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Is how we grew up. That's okay. when you could put it put up Christmas. Not uh, before. Not before. So today, when you go into a store on November tenth and hear Christmas carols, <laughs> it sounds a little early, huh? Uh, no, I'm saying after Thanksgiving. So you're okay. Yeah, after you're Thanksgiving. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had to take them down uh, for the first of the year. Really, right That's away, huh? Up. Yep, right after New Year's. Okay, sounds good. Coach said it. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.